Today I'm doing a private coaching session with you trying to make sure you learn the lessons from Q1 and that you dominate Q2. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Today, I'd love to coach you through what worked, what didn't, and what you're going to do differently in Q2 to make 2018 your best year ever. So, I'm gonna ask you a whole bunch of questions. If you're on TomFerry.com, you're gonna see a link down there to a form where you can actually do this Q1 review and then a goal setting workshop. If you're on the train right now or you're on the treadmill running and you're watching, Take the time just to answer all the questions. You know, go through them in your mind. Maybe even, you know, take the time and hit the pause button. Or better yet, watch it six or seven times and let it really sink in. I'd like to frame it like this. If you and I were sitting together inside my office, what would I ask you? So I wrote down, the first question is, tell me, what was your original goal for 2018? As we sit here, you know, in April, what was your original goal? What did you want to accomplish? What were you committed to? How many transactions? How much revenue? What was the dollar volume? Was there something like, I wanna take this many listings or I wanna have this breakthrough in my business? What was the original commitment that you made? And then the second question I would ask you is, why? Why was that goal a must for you? Like what was the motivation behind it, right? It's, it's never, hey, I wanna make $250,000, right? That's a big, exciting number, but what's the value behind that? You know, hey, Tom, I, I really wanna pay for my daughter's wedding or I wanna save some money and buy my first home or look, we're looking to, to move or whatever it may be, your motive to act matters. And if you take the time right now to think about what was motivating me when I first set this intention, as you've heard me talk about in multiple shows, we sometimes lose sight of or we don't remind ourselves enough of our motivation, our why, and that's why we stop doing the things that ultimately give us the power. So the first two questions, number one, what was your original commitment? What was your original goal for this year? And number two, why was it a must? What was your motivation behind that? I don't wanna hear, oh, I just wanna make a bunch of money. I wanna know why you wanted to make the money. You know, if you said, I wanna sell 50 homes or 100 homes, I wanna know why, what does that mean to you? What's the value behind it? What's the emotion behind it? Because that's ultimately what's gonna drive you, again, to do the things that make you achieve the goal. The third thing I wrote down is, we're gonna break down it again. You gotta go to tomferry.com, you wanna download all this, because I'm gonna ask you to break down for me, what were your results in Q1? So the first part is, how many closed transactions did you have? Like, be honest with yourself. Was it a slow first quarter? Was it a great first quarter? How many closings? What was the sales volume? And what was the GCI? Then I'm gonna ask you, what about your pendings, right? Could be escrows, could be pendings, depending on what you call them, right? But how many do you have right now? And what's the volume and what's the GCI? And then we like to total all that up to say, hey, at the end of Q1, my total closed and pending is A, B, C. You should know those numbers. But here's the real trick, is to then say, now how does that relate to my overall goal, right? If you're in the Northeast, as an example, a lot of my clients there will say, Tom, I wanna get to 15 to 18% of my overall goal. And if I'm there at the end of the first quarter, I'm on track. Right? But maybe you're in a, a marketplace like Southern California or you're in uh, Vancouver, Washington, where you say, I've got to really make it rain in the first quarter because my summer months, as an example, they slow down and everybody checks out. You know the tempo of your market, so you know at this point what percentage your business should be at by the end of the first quarter. So just own that. Then I would ask you, going a little deeper, how many appointments did you go on? Now, I don't know how many times I have to say to you that this business is about one thing. How many appointments you go on, how many opportunities you sit down, belly to belly, knee to knee, face to face, with potential buyers and potential sellers, right? I've always said I'd rather have 10 lousy appointments than no appointments, because someone just might say yes. How many appointments did you go on in the first quarter? Was it the, was it the right number for you? Do you feel it was too many, too little? Only you know. Then I wrote down what percentage of that was that to your plan? You know, did you intend to go on 20 appointments and went on 15, or did you intend to go on 20 and went on 35 or 40? Once I know the numbers, then I'd ask you, what happened? Like, what were the levers you pulled, or what were the levers you failed to pull? Speaking of, I go right to the next one. How many hours of power? How many times did you sit down and make your phone calls, calling your database, calling expires? You know me, I'm the no wrong way to do it guy. I don't care who it was. But I know this, if you're not picking up that phone and reaching out to customers, making phone calls, sending texts and more, you're missing more opportunities than you're getting. So in your plan, you probably said, hey, I'm gonna do an hour a day, five days a week. Did you track it? 
How many numbers did you do? It's interesting to me, because I've been doing this for so long, I can now look at somebody's numbers. Let's just say you were tracking all this stuff perfectly, and I look and say, well, isn't this interesting? You did 75% of your prospecting and appointments, and you're at 65% of your overall transactions. There's always a direct correlation, my friend. There's always a direct correlation. It's data in, data out. If you don't make the calls, if you don't do the follow-up, if you don't do the open houses, you shouldn't be expecting lots of success and riches, my friend. It doesn't work that way. Now, Tom, I don't really like prospecting. Hey, this could be open houses. This could be Zillow leads. This could be any source you want. But if you're not what, you know, pumping the well, if you will, the water's not gonna come out. So think about it right now for Q1. Did you make the calls you were supposed to make? or did you miss a few days? I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm just trying to, to really acknowledge what got you here is not gonna get you there. You're gonna have to do something differently in Q2, and the great news is there's still time. The next question I'd ask you is, what lead systems worked? As you reflect and look at your closing board or your, your escrow or your pending board, what were the sources? Open houses, Zillow lead, buyer referral, past client, past client direct transaction, past client referral. Knowing your sources, where did you spend your time? What worked? And then the third part is, or the next part is, what didn't work? What were the lead sources that you wrote inside your plan and maybe A, haven't given yourself enough time for them to mature and bake, or you just didn't give it the energy and the effort that it deserved? So let's go through those again. How many hours of power, right? How many conversations did you have? How many open houses did you do? What lead systems worked for you? Like, where did it work for you? And then, what lead systems need to be improved on? You know, if you just stop and answer all of those questions, awareness, as we talked about a million times, is the first part of change. The moment you could say, I have this really exciting goal, I've got this motivation, I really wanna save this money, I really wanna take this trip, I wanna support my family, whatever it may be, right? I've got the motivation, but if I didn't do the work, if I didn't do the numbers, if I didn't do the math, then guess what? Shame on you. Okay, so three more questions before we wrap up Q1. Question I would ask you is, what are you most proud of? As you reflect back on Q1, like, where do you, where do you pinch yourself and say, oh, good job, you did it. Was, it? was it you did your hours of prospecting? Was it, you know, you did the right number of open houses? Is it projects that you completed? Is it a tough transaction that you were able to navigate and ultimately save the day for the buyer and the seller? What are you most proud of? Question number two, where did you fall short and what was the lesson? I think about our own business. I, I say, hey, we fell short a part of our Q1 goal. We all have moments like that where we don't hit the goal. The key is when you lose, what was the lesson? See, I know for me it was a manpower issue. We needed more people to follow up on leads and to book more appointments and to serve more clients. How about you? What were the lessons that you learned just reflecting back on the last 90 days? And then the third question is, who do you need to thank for their support in Q1? You know, it's always a good idea to send a handwritten note or make a phone call or shoot a little video and say, Carol, I just wanna say thank you so much for everything you've done, right? Richard, I really appreciate the extra effort. You know, reaching out to your coach, reaching out to your broker manager, reaching out to your mortgage rep, your title rep, and just thanking them for going the extra mile, maybe on that tough transaction. It goes a long way, and I strongly recommend it. Once you take the time to answer all those questions, you can package up Q1 and say, now that's the past, right? I learned the lessons, I know what I did right, I know what I need to adjust on, and then we start setting goals for Q2. So let's take some time and do that. Obviously, I'm gonna start number one with, what are your production goals? What do you want to accomplish? So, you know, how many listing appointments? How many listings do you want to take? And how many listings do you want to sell in Q2? It's the spring market, my friend, now is the time. So how many listing appointments? How many listings taken? How many listings sold? And on the flip side, how many buyer appointments? And how many buyer sales are you committed to in Q2? I'm gonna strongly recommend you get that up visual inside of your office so it is always in front of you every single day you show up. This is my goal. This is what I'm committed to. Then I'm gonna ask you number two, what's the why behind that? Like, what's different now? What's your motivation today? Sometimes it changes. Sometimes we need that short burst of motivation. So what's gonna give you the extra edge in Q2 to do some of the things that perhaps you didn't do in Q1 that are gonna cause you to win? So what's your motivation right now? Question number three, 
what new activities are required. So what are the tactics? What are the actions you have to take, right? Is it you know, doing more lead follow-up? Is it maybe doing follow-up twice a day like we've recommended on many shows? Is it finally reaching back out to your database and saying, hey, I know it's been a while, the market's been crazy, I gotta ask, have you had any thoughts of selling? You know your business. You know what works and what doesn't. I would challenge you to say, what do you need to be doing more of in Q2 that's gonna cause you to win? The fourth question I wrote down is, what adjustments do you need to make to your schedule? I mean, we've done tens of shows that were time management related on the Tom Ferry Show. We know if it's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist. So in Q2, do you need to go to bed a little earlier? Do you need to wake up a little earlier? Do you need to reinvent your morning routine? Do you need to make sure that you know, your hour of power is scheduled every day, your follow-up is scheduled every day? Do you need to pre-put in there a one o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock appointment, and then work your butt off to fill those every single day? Do you need a scheduled day off to give yourself the rest and the break that you need so you can hard charge the rest of the time? What adjustments do you need to make to your schedule to make sure you're winning in Q2? And the last question I'd ask is, why, again, why is this an absolute must? You're like, Tom, you brought it up twice, I know. But here's what I'm seeing right now. I'm watching agents, big shout out to Jill Biggs, one of our wonderful coal banker clients. Um, she's had 110 transactions closed and pending at the end of Q1. I'm looking at my buddy Devin here from Hawaii. 110 transactions at the end of Q1. Guess what, that's way more than she did last year. Big shout out to you, Jill, and the whole team. Motive matters. Right? If you had a really big Q1 and all of a sudden you're like, hey, I'm hot stuff, I had a really big Q1, oftentimes in that state we stop doing what got us there. You gotta go back to that motivation. Why is it a must for you? Now, I've asked you a whole bunch of questions. If we were together one-on-one, -on -one, I'd start to ask you to make commitments. What's that one thing I can count on for you every day? What's the additional accountability you're gonna need? Who do you need to reach out to? Is it your coach? Is it your broker manager? Is it a friend inside your office? Is it your spouse? Is it your, is it your nine year old son? If you say, look, if I do what I'm supposed to do, you get the brand new Xbox at the end of the 90 days, I have a feeling that nine year old's gonna follow up on you every single day and hold you accountable to do the things that give you the power. You and I both know, if you don't have the accountability in place, the odds are you're gonna get a little off track and it's gonna be hard to get back on track. So create some accountability, whether it's friends or family or your peers, make a challenge with somebody inside the office, but make sure you've got the structure in place in Q2 to absolutely maximize this time. You've heard me say it before, the streets are paved with gold right now. This is the time. So. Make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, you jump back to tomferry.com on my blog, download all these questions, take the time, fill them out, answer it in detail, share it with your manager, share it with a friend inside the office, and let's make sure that you have everything you need in place to have 2018 be your best year ever. Thank you for allowing me to coach you today. Thank you for being in my community. Thank you for watching my stuff. I appreciate you more than you will ever know. Talk soon. Hey, it's Coach Tom Ferry. Have you been considering hiring a coach? If so, click the link below and check out what we do.